Hello and welcome to another Armageddon video. I thought that I would do one for the holidays. I know that I've been bad about doing them. It's so. been sporadic depending on the amount of time I have and how high quality I think my haircut is at the moment. So, um, I wanted to talk a little, I, I wanted basically to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and to uh, just sort of do something in the tradition of uh, Christmas as we have in the past. Uh, we celebrated it in different ways uh, with GDB posts or uh, sometimes there have been uh, system messages on Christmas Eve. And you know, over the course of uh, over a decade of playing, I will admit there is more than one Christmas Eve that I've spent on the mud. Uh, or even, I, I, I remember a couple of New Year's Eves. So, uh, sometimes we'll see some message, you know, that's when it appears in the system and, and the message appears basically in the virtual sky. And uh, there is a skeletal reindeer figure, I think there's a skeletal reindeer or a skeletal caru, caru being the game equivalent of a reindeer. And uh, staff members will sometimes ride around on this creature because it is a, a flying mount uh, on Christmas Eve and give out presents, which are kind of OOC jokes, uh, usually a piece of candy or something like that with a uh, uh, description that says best wishes for me and stuff. So um, <coughs> what I thought I would do, uh, and I hope this is a present rather than a torture as in uh, Vogon poetry sort of stuff, but I thought I would read aloud. I have a book that has come out. Here is my book which is reversed. Cool. Um, my book's called The Surgeon's Tale and Other Stories. It's a collaboration between myself and Jeff Vandermeer. And it has the title story, The Surgeon's Tale, which Jeff and I wrote together, which is a novelette about a man and a zombie arm. And then there are two stories by Jeff, The Farmer's Cat and The Lovecraft at Cafe. And I have uh, a story called The Key Decides Its Destiny, and The Dead Girl's Wedding March, and finally, a story which actually kind of got its inspiration from Armageddon, in which people who read the Armageddon website are probably familiar with. Uh, on the website, it's the Templar Sons, and it appears in the book as the Three Sons, and it is based on an idea that Nestling gave me at one point, and, you know, he, he said, oh, wouldn't it be cool if, and I said, oh, let me write that, and he said, sure, and not that he was going to go write it. So, uh, I wrote it, and we needed another uh, third kind of very small fairy tale in the book, and so I pulled out Three Sons, and so I will read that aloud, and hopefully it will be enjoyable. Dun, dun, dun. Three Sons. Once upon a time, there was a minor official of the desert city of Alanac. His name was Aurelian, and he was altogether an unremarkable man, destined to remain in his blue robe of rank, and whose only moment of note had been a conversation with Garrick the Red. Some of his lack of remarkableness he had brought on, him, brought on himself, for he was a quiet man and not given to flamboyant gestures or clever conversations. And his quietness did not reflect any sort of profound or philosophical ruminations, but was the quiet of a man who took life as it presented itself, with little wonder or appreciation. His appearance made up the other part of his lack of remarkableness, for he was, like most of the inhabitants of Alanac, dark of skin, hair, and eyes, and not overly tall. The life of an official has certain bonuses, such as the ability to tax people at whim or to confiscate spice or coins or concubines. But with those benefits come certain perils, such as assassination attempts by disgruntled merchants or fellow officials. After Aurelian had seen the third of his fellows dead to poison or a quick knife, he decided he would avoid suffering the same fate by hiring guards, good guards, loyal guards. And to this matter, he lent a certain amount of thought, and at length arrived at an idea. He went to the slaving house of Orsale and told the slave keeper that he wished to purchase three ogres of very young age, old enough to walk, but not old enough to speak clearly. And when he had made his selection among the array of the best that Borsale had to offer, he went home with his new charges, toddling after him. For Aurelian was clever enough when need held and he had decided that the best ties were those of blood, or believed blood, 
and that if the ogres believed he was related to him, they believed that he was related to them, they would serve him gladly enough. So he set about convincing them over the next couple of years that he was their father. Look, he told the ogres, who he had named Tug and Toby and Terricatus, as he touched his face. Just like me, you have two eyes. You inherited those from me, your father. And two ears, and a nose, though mine is a trifle longer than yours. This is how I know you are my sons, and I love you well, just as you love me, your father. And the ogres, who were as simple-minded as any other of their breed, nodded and accepted his word. As they grew older, he dressed them in armor and had them trained to fight, and wherever he went, his three ogres toddled, trailed after him, solemnly following their sire. They were uncomfortable questions at times, such as the fate of the trio's mother. But Aurelian concocted a story of a beautiful ogress with long, dark hair that fell to her ankles, who had come from the shores of the Sea of Silt to fall in love with him, and who died to an assassin attempting to kill him. The story grew over time. And by the end, Aurelian was half in love with his creation, whose eyes were blue and lips were full, and who had a cleverer turn of mind than most of the larger human ones. And every once in a while, Tug or Toby might slip and call him father in public, but he discouraged that, pointing out that if assassins knew they were his beloved sons, they might kill the ogres as they had killed their mother, attempting to cause the public official, police official pain. On a hot day when dust cloaked the streets and the beggars fought over the slightest sliver of shade, Aurelian and his ogres were out, went out walking. They paced the length of Mellis Circle and a long caravan road. Near the gates where the cows were thickest, Aurelian felt someone tug at his belt pouch and turned in time to see a lean, wiry pickpocket tucking away the stolen pouch with one long-fingered hand. Seize him, he shouted, pointing at the thief. The ogres did. The thief pleaded for mercy, words spilling from his lips faster than sand grains being swept across a dune, and Aurelian frowned and scowled and refused to listen. Telling Tug to continue holding on to the thief, he went in search of a collar and a whip, for he meant to flay the man's skin from his bones and enslave him for daring to touch Aurelian's person. And so the thief continued speaking, trying to persuade the ogres to let him go in the name of kindness and mercy and various other qualities. But Tug and Toby and Terricatus all sadly shook their immense shaggy heads. Father wouldn't like that, Tug said. And the thief paused and looked at him, startled. Father, he said. Terricatus pointed in the direction that Aurelian had taken, and all three nodded their heads. How, said the thief, the words as slow as his thoughts were fast, how could such a thing come to be? Tug leaned to whisper in his ear. It is a long story, but he's our father. For proof of this, you have but to look at us. For do we not have two eyes, and just as he does? And do we not have one mouth and one nose, just as he does? The thief's face cleared. Ah, he said, my luck has turned. For here I came to Alanac myself, searching for my three long-lost brothers. Perhaps you've seen them. They are ogres, all fierce and brave, and each one of them has two eyes and two ears and but a single nose. Astonished, the three gaped at him, and then, one by one, they extended their arms and hugged him tight, each one shouting, Brother, to the great astonishment of the passers-by. And when Aurelian returned, carrying his whip and a collar, he found his ogres gone. The thief had persuaded them to come wandering with him, and where he led them, and where their bones lie, those three sons, no one knows to this day. So, uh, you can order the book off my website, should you so desire. It is a slim volume, costing $9.99. Uh, feel free to order a copy if you feel uh, so inclined. So, anyway, that is my Merry Christmas to all of you. Um, the, mainly the Armageddon players, but any of the other folks that are tuned in and watching. Um, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and all of that good stuff. And uh, peace. Yeah.